location in the forest and I think over the years we've been able to make it more and more sustainable. It's a um, solar passive straight north facing uh, mud brick um, that in winter the sun when it's out unlike today um, the sun pours in the upper level windows and even in under the veranda um, through the lower level windows. In summer there is no sun hitting any windows anywhere. So there are two couples who live here and we've over the years created a sort of uh, their end and our end loosely speaking and with common areas in the middle and common laundries, um, five kilowatts of solar electricity, um, two solar hot water services. Um, as I said, the solar passive design of the house. Heating is um, two high boxes, um, basically at either end of the house, but they're supplemented by um, reverse cycle conditions. In the central hallway, I bought an extraction fan and located it high in the cathedral ceiling where there's lots of heat and that extracts the hot air out of the top of the ceiling and blows it down the hallway. Our rubbish bin that goes out is usually going out with just a very small bag and that's it. Um, our recycle bin usually goes out um, reasonably full, but the rubbish bin goes out um, almost empty. Three bays here, um, and we compost as much as anything and everything we can. Um, Kay even goes out and collects um, the brown fallen leaves in Bendigo. It's a, a solar passive design, so um, the verandering down the front is designed so that um, none of the summer sun hits the house um, but the winter sun does and so it's seven foot wide and we're surrounded by trees um, natives and um, we haven't we've got very few um, non-natives um, and uh, but have a combination of creating distance because we live in the whipstick forest we want a di we want distance in terms of if a fire happens but also um, shading uh, when we can when we need it and I think we've sort of got there after all this time the house would be probably at a guess 40 years old it's a post and beam mud brick design so as our needs grew with families and uh, individual needs we've been able to move walls and create spaces um, that other other designs wouldn't have allowed but the post and beam construction has allowed us to actually fill in doorways do anything different would be about the double glazing and extra solar for a battery we have done the curtains everywhere uh, recently made a number of nesting boxes uh, out of leftover bits of timber that I've got. I, that one is a Eastern Rosella. I put it up last uh, Friday. On Saturday the first pair had a look in. When we first bought the place we had a ripper come in and rip up the boundaries and discovered that this the soil here was incredibly rich, dark, unlike the clay elsewhere. Um, in later years we have since found out that the Eagle Hawk night cart used to come out here and there were trenches in this area um, right here and they would empty the, the night cart droppings um, in this spot. So that's why this particular spot is particularly rich soil. Features apricots, apples. Uh, the watering system for the vegetable garden all through is uh, A, the water's from the dam and B, it's uh, drip fed using the uh, recycled water purple pipe which puts more water in than the brown drip pipe. A closed dying rack that's uh, uh, on a set, a set of pulleys and that uh, sits above the uh, wood fire and um, you can fill that up uh, with up to two loads of washing depending on what, what the washing is and they will dry overnight.
We uh, live on the edge of the Whipstick State Park and we own eight acres. Uh, what is around us is the box iron bark uh, regenerated forest after the gold rush. <laughs>